Hi, I'm Annie, and I'm from New York. Please like and subscribe to STA. Woohoo! And I win once again. That's so unfair. You always cheat. <laughs> Don't be a crybaby. Annie, do you always have to behave like a barbarian? Michael could have injured himself badly. It was an accident. I'm fine. We were just playing. Oh, I know how wild Annie becomes. She just doesn't know when to stop. Sometimes, I wished I didn't have a mom because she was always saying horrible stuff to me. I did the total opposite of what my mom desired. For instance, I played soccer and I was the best at it. Annie, Annie, Annie. My best friend was a boy. Michael and I were like peanut butter and jelly. And sometimes we even dressed like each other, which drove my mom up the wall. Annie, what on earth are you wearing? Hello to you too, mom. What's in the bag? Oh, I'm glad you asked. Look, I found this cute dress for you. You have such a great figure. I'm sure you will look so cute. Ew, mom, you know I hate pink. Uh, what did I do to have a daughter who likes being a tomboy? <laughs> Your mom is so dramatic. More like annoying. If it wasn't for you in my life, I would probably be the most miserable person in the world. You mean a lot to me too, Annie. Well, our happy friendhood was short-lived because all of a sudden and out of the blue, I saw moving trucks at Michael's house. We're moving back to Italy. Why do you guys have to move to another country? My parents are separating now, so mom has to move back to Italy. How am I going to live without you? Hey, we can still see each other over the internet. That's not the same. Well, long story short, Michael and I contacted each other a couple of times, and then I stopped once I went to high school. Even though I was one of the smart kids at school, the friends I had were a group of bad girls who got up to mischief all the time. They took up most of my time, and usually I ended up in trouble. Annie, come on. It's your turn to splash paint all over the principal's car. I wouldn't do that if I were you. The next day, mom was called to school, and she was so disappointed in me. I am so sorry about Annie's behavior. I promise it won't ever happen again. Annie is actually one of our top achievers, and the only problem we have with her is her behavior. I have a suggestion that might help. I would do anything to help Annie be more disciplined. Take this. It's information for the exchange student program. Since she is a smart girl, I think she would qualify. Mom seemed eager for me to try the exchange program out, as if she was eager for me to get out of her space. Annie, I think your principal is right. This is exactly what you need. Oh, you have been waiting to get rid of me for years. I'm not going anywhere. Fine, suit yourself. Oh, and by the way, the trip was in Italy. Michael was in Italy, and it got me thinking. I sent Michael a message, letting him know about the exchange program. I thought he would ignore me since I didn't talk to him for a while, but he was happy to hear from me. So I packed my bags and took the offer to explore Italy. When I was finally there, I looked around the airport searching for Michael, and then a hand touched my shoulder, and stood before me was a gorgeous guy. I couldn't believe how much he had changed. Wow, you turned out to be quite the hunk. And you look super gorgeous as always. Welcome to Italy, my friend. I felt so happy to see him. And when he took me to his house, his mom was even more excited to see me. I missed her cooking. She cooked the best pasta ever. So glad to have you here. Come on, I made your favorite. Michael looked at me differently, like he like liked me. And I wasn't sure as yet if I felt the same, even though he looked so fine. Do you still play soccer? No. When I got to high school, a lot changed. I can see, but you shouldn't give up on what you love. Michael had a point, and I was going to use my time in Italy getting back into my love for sport. The next day, I was going to start my first day as an exchange student. And when I entered with Michael next to me, girls looked at me sternly. Looks like you have a lot of admirers in the school, Mr. Charmer Boy. Yeah, but none of them are my type. Oh yeah, what is your type? You. My face turned red when he said that, and because I wasn't looking, I accidentally bumped into another guy who looked like he stepped out of a popular rock band. Watch where you're walking, girl. I'm so... Before I could apologize, he cut me off and looked viciously at Michael. And you! Don't think I forgot about what you did. I'm still going to get you back for that. Hey, are you okay? What was he talking about? That's Brent the Jerk. He's my stepbrother. What? How come you never mentioned him before? Because I only found out when we moved to Italy. My dad chose to go back to Brent's mom, and my mom followed him here, trying her best to convince him not to leave us, but Brent's mom was rich, so he chose her. Wow, I'm so sorry you had to go through all that. I'm okay now. Brent is a spoiled brat. He tried to steal test papers from the principal's office. And I saw him, so I told the principal. That's why he's mad. You did the right thing. Don't feel bad about it. Later after school, I had to wait for Michael to finish his football practice. And then I saw Brent sneaking into the change room, so I followed him. I found him fiddling with one of the lockers, and then I bravely stood behind him. What do you think you're doing? None of your business. 
What are you doing in the boys' change rooms? I asked you first. What are you doing? Oh, <laughs> I don't have to tell you anything. Just because you're rich and spoiled, don't think you can always have your way. Brent suddenly came close to my face, and I felt almost taken by his hazel brown eyes and his strong jawline. But then I remembered what Michael had told me. I'm not scared of you. Don't believe everything my stepbrother tells you. Later that afternoon, while Michael and I were doing our homework together like old times, I felt a little awkward because every time he completed an answer, he glared at me. I miss this. Us doing homework together. Me too. But if you keep on staring at me, you'll have no homework to submit in class tomorrow. I can't help myself. You are… Michael, there is something I need to tell you. While you were at football practice, I followed Brent into the boys' change room. Did something happen between you two? No, of course not. I saw him fiddling at one of the lockers and then I told him off. Good. Uh, he's always up to no good. It's best you stay far away from him. Yeah, he… Michael surprised me with a kiss and I was speechless. I really like you, Annie. Well, I don't know what to say. Um… What? You don't feel the same? Do you like someone else? Huh? No, I… You don't think I'm good enough? Michael, we're friends. Date me, please. I think we're meant for each other. I felt so under pressure. I didn't want him to feel bad, so I said yes. Okay, I guess. Dating Michael had to take some getting used to. Every time he kissed me, I felt so weird. And then the next shocking thing happened at the school parking lot. Are you alright? Uh, oh my gosh, babe, are you okay? Yeah, yeah. That guy would have knocked me if it wasn't for… I didn't get a chance to say thank you to Brent, and apparently the scooter guy's brakes were not working. And as for Michael, he didn't even want to acknowledge how Brent saved me. Brent kind of rescued me. Did you see that? Oh, I would have rescued you too, but it happened so fast. During lunch break, Michael was at football practice again, so I was on my own. I tried to find a quiet spot to sit, and then I saw Brent sitting under a tree. This was my chance to thank him. Hey, I just wanted to say thank you for coming to my rescue this morning. No worries. So, how was dating my stepbrother going for you? Um, it's good. Hmm, what did he tell you about me? I think you already know. You like drawing? Yeah, it keeps my mind off negative people like my brother. Well, I've known Michael from childhood, and there's nothing negative about him. Ha! Huh, that's what you think. He is very good at manipulating people. Before I could say another word, Michael startled me from behind. Didn't I tell you to stay away from this guy? Michael, I thought you were at football practice. Yes, I was. And then I got a message from a friend that you were talking to this jerk when I told you to stay away from him. Michael started raising his voice at me, and Brent got up to defend me. Hey, you can't just shout at her. And you're the jerk, not me. Brent and Michael started at each other fiercely, and then Michael pushed Brent against the tree. Michael, what is wrong with you? Come on, let's go. No, you're acting ridiculous. I came here to thank Brent for rescuing me this morning. Why are you acting like such a jerk? You calling me a jerk? After all that my mom and I have done for you, we invited you to our house. I was your best friend when your crazy mom kept nagging you for being different. You are so selfish. I felt my anger build up, and then I slapped Michael. And as I blindly stormed off, I bumped into a pole and collapsed. I don't know how long I was unconscious, but when I opened my eyes, I was happy to see my mom. Hey, sweetie. Mom, what are you doing here? You blacked out for two days, hon. Of course I would be here. You came all the way to Italy for me? Yes, you are my everything, Annie. While you were away, I became lonely. Do you want to come back home? Not just yet, Mom. I signed up for a top-class girls soccer club. I'm waiting to see if I got in. Soccer? So that's what you want to do for the rest of your life? It's what I love, Mom. I never stopped you from being a beauty queen. <sighs> You're right. I'm sorry for being a horrible mom. <laughs> You're not a horrible mom. I'm sorry for not being the daughter you always wanted. Hey, you're perfect just the way you are. It felt good to hear mom say those words. And while we were bonding, Michael entered with a lot of balloons and flowers. I'll leave you two now. Take care of my baby girl, Michael. Hey, babe. I'm so sorry about what happened. I didn't mean for you to end up in hospital. It's not your fault. The doctor said there was a lack of iron in my blood. Every time Michael randomly kissed me, I felt so awkward. I didn't feel any chemistry with him. What's wrong? Michael, I… I don't feel what you're feeling. I've always liked you, just as a friend. So you were playing with my feelings? Or maybe you like Brent the jerk? Michael started acting irrationally again, and then Brent surprisingly entered the room. You should stop calling me a jerk, brother. I did nothing wrong to you. What are you doing here? Get out! Now! I want him to stay. I told you he is not a good person. He lies. 
and he does all sorts of bad things to people. That's not true and you know that. The only reason he's angry at me is because his mom lied to my dad. He was never my dad's son, but he still loves you. I don't have a problem with you. Stop lying! Michael then went bizarre and grabbed my drips pole and charged after Brent. Michael, stop! No, I won't let him have you too! When Michael refused to listen, I pressed a button next to my bed. The security guards ran in and held Michael back from harming Brent. Later that evening, the hospital let me go home. Mom had to rush back to New York, and when I was at Michael's house, he was not around, and his mom opened up to me. This is all my fault. I lied to Michael about who his father was because I didn't want him to learn the truth about his real father, who ended up in prison when I was only three weeks pregnant. Yeah, he seems to have a lot of anger. When Brent's father found out I lied, he left us and came back to Italy. I had no choice but to also come back home. This was my mother's house. Everything will be okay. When Michael eventually came home, he didn't say a word to his mom or me. He hardly even ate his dinner. And after I helped Michael's mom with the dishes, I decided to face him. I don't want to talk to you. Well, I want to talk to you. I know you're hurt inside because of your dad not being your real dad, but you can't just blame Brent for that. He was just born, and none of it is his fault. You don't know anything. I know you, and I know that you are a good person. Don't let your parents' mistakes determine who you are. It's hard. It's been so hard to understand. I was also just born into a lie, and when I found out, I just lost it. I know, but you are not alone, and no one hates you. You need to accept the truth and then move on. Thank you. I'm sorry I pushed you to date me. When I saw you, I felt like my old self again, and I just can't understand. And I'm still here. The next day at school, when I saw Brent, I sat down next to him and things seemed cool between us. I'm so glad to see you're out of hospital. How do you feel? I'm great. Listen, I'm sorry I judged you before, I- It's okay. And that day in the change room, I was opening my locker. Believe it or not, I'm also on the football team, but I never play. I'm their standby guy. <laughs> Thank you for clearing that up. When Michael appeared at the table, Brent got up to leave because he didn't want any trouble. I'll just go now. See you around, Annie. Wait, you don't have to leave. I'm sorry. I was wrong to be angry at you. Okay. Thanks. I guess I'm sorry, too. Aww. This is so overwhelming. I guess we can all be friends now. Or more than friends. Hey, don't push your luck now. I finally received the phone call I've been waiting for. I was accepted in the biggest soccer club as an intern. My dreams were coming true. And I was sure glad to celebrate the great news with my two best friends. Hi, everyone. I'm Bella from Portugal. Please like and subscribe to SDA. This hotel has always been my playground, since mom worked here as one of the maids. But whenever she caught me watching the guests, she would pull me by the ear. Bella, how many times must I tell you that the guests do not like spies? But mom, what else do you expect me to do while you're cleaning? Why is your daughter here again? I thought I told you this is a place of work and important people. I'm important too, miss. I'm going to be a rich person one day, owning my own designer label. Well, in this place, you are trouble. Please, make other arrangements for your daughter next time. Mom's manager was a big meanie. She was horrible to everyone. And despite her demands, Mom had no choice but to have me at work after school hours. We couldn't afford a nanny or aftercare. I enjoyed being at the hotel, since I loved watching all the fancy rich people that came from all over the world. Call me weird, but I enjoyed stalking the rich people and just watching how they sipped their tea, dressed in their fancy gowns, powdered their faces, and how they enjoy the best of life at the massage spa. I had this dream of being a brand like Gucci or Louis Vuitton. I believed I was a good stylist, but mom kept telling me to focus on my books and to stop dreaming. The only thing you should be doing is learning hard and then working hard. That's the only way money is earned, not by dreams. And why does Oprah always tell us to dream big, huh? By the time I was 10, I started walking and talking like a rich, classy person, and mom would get so annoyed. Mother darling, could I kindly have a cup of tea? Oh, good grief, not this again. Bella, we are poor and we are never going to be one of them. Mom always knew how to burst my bubble with her negative mindset, but I never let that stop me. Once, when I was 15, I sneaked into one of the first class rooms while there was a big event going on at the reception area. When I saw a beautiful yellow gown, just like the princess from Beauty and the Beast, I quickly tried it on since no one was around and was amazed at my reflection. Until this boy appeared behind me. <clears throat> you look beautiful. Uh, I'm sorry. I, I, w I was going to put it back. Till we meet again. Beauty. I was stunned out of my mind because firstly the guy was dropped it gorgeous 
And secondly, when he touched my face, I felt goosebumps until he disappeared. Like he was some kind of criminal. So mysterious. I ran to the balcony to look for him, and just then, my mom entered. Bella, I've been looking for you everywhere. And where did you get that dress? Relax, Mom, I'm going to put it back. Bella, you know I could get into a lot of trouble for this. What were you thinking? I was just imagining myself being rich. There's nothing wrong with having dreams. Well, those imaginations are going to get us into trouble. Now hurry, I hear someone coming. As Mom tried getting me out of the dress, the lady who stayed in the room entered, and she did not look happy. What on coconuts is going on in my room? And why are you wearing my daughter's dress? I'm so sorry, ma'am. I can explain. How long have you been in my room going through my stuff? <gasps> I hope you didn't go into my jewelry chest. I felt so bad looking at the fear in mom's eyes, and we would never steal from anyone. But then the woman looked at us more horrified after she searched her drawer. The necklace! It's gone! What did you do with the necklace? We never touched your jewelry chest, ma'am. Please check again. I'm sure you'll find it. Do you have any idea how much that necklace is worth? It's worth more than your pathetic life! It has a diamond worth a billion dollars! I'm calling the guards! After a few seconds, the guards came rushing in, and Mom and I were taken to the police station. I was so confused. And then I remembered that boy. He disappeared like he was a ghost. He could be the thief! <laughs> Mom and I were taken in to be questioned, and the investigating officer kept twisting my words around. So, you went into the room to check if the coast is clear? No, I didn't say that. I usually loiter around the hotel, and I found the door open and entered the room. When I saw a pretty dress, I got fascinated. So, you tried on a dress that was not yours, and I'm sure you even looked for a necklace to go with the dress? No, a boy came into the room and then just disappeared. So, you and your mom had someone steal the necklace for you? No matter how honestly I answered the officer, he still made it seem like mom and I were the criminals. Weeks went by with the police investigating the stolen necklace, and then the final result was mom getting arrested, and I was so devastated. This is all my fault. I'm so sorry, mom. You will have to stay with your uncle for a while. I'm going to get you out of here. I'll find the real thief who stole that necklace. Two years passed, and mom was still behind bars, and I just withdrew myself from everyone. I lived with my uncle, who was a very rich and lonely man. He was actually very nice to me. I don't know why mom distanced herself from him all through my childhood years. Bella, I have opened a savings account for you. This will be for your studies after school, as well as anything else you need as a young lady. Thank you so much, Uncle Todd. I promise I won't ever let you down. You're a good young lady, Bella. Uncle Todd, how come you never married anyone? I got carried away with business, so I kind of forgot about family. But I have you now. I grew fond of my uncle, but even though he gave me everything, I couldn't stop thinking about my poor mom in a cold jail cell. And then something happened one day, while I took a walk in the huge garden. I saw my uncle giving a boy a thick roll of cash. When I stepped closer, my jaw dropped. <gasps> you! I remember you! Uh, sorry. I don't recall you. Oh, please! You're the thief who stole the necklace from the hotel two years ago, and now my mom is in prison because of you! Is she on some kind of medication? Bella, darling, I think you got the wrong guy. Zane here is my driver, and he also runs a few errands for me. Well, he's also a thief! I was so mad at my <laughs> uncle for not believing me. And the next day, when I waited for the driver to take me to school, I was even more frantic when the driver was Zane. What happened to the other driver? He was sick, so your uncle called me. Shall we leave? Yes, you can stop by the police station. I need to report you. Listen, Bella, I know you saw me that night, but I did not steal that necklace. I was there on another mission. Please, save it! You disappeared like a criminal, and now I want you behind bars. Drive me to the police station now! Zane surprised me when he actually listened to me and parked outside the police station. Shall we go in? Yes, but why did you take that necklace? I didn't take the necklace. That night when I saw you in that room, I was there to find out about a client your uncle does business with. He sent me as a spy to find out if the client was trustworthy. But if you didn't take the necklace, then who did? My mom is in prison for no reason! I became really emotional thinking about my mom and decided to walk to school. Bella, wait! You can leave. I'll tell my uncle you dropped me off at school. No, please, let me help you! The only way anyone can help me is if they find the real thief and my mom gets set free. I know, and I think I know who that thief is. Instead of going to school, I asked Zane if we could sit down somewhere, and he'd tell me everything he knows, so we went to a small coffee shop. How come you're not in school? I study online, and I work for your uncle since my dad, who is my only parent, is too ill to work. Oh, 
I'm sorry. I also come from a struggle. My mom worked really hard to support me. I used to have this crazy fantasy of being a rich lady in fancy clothes. I don't think that's a fantasy. I think that's a great goal to have. I want to have my own accounting firm one day, like your uncle. You work really hard. I believe you'll make it. That night, before I saw you in that room, another taller woman in a suit stepped out of the room. She had a manager badge tagged on her coat. Oh my gosh, it was the hotel manager! I always knew she was a devious witch. How can I get proof it was her? The corridor's camera should have picked up something. Unless she tampered with it. There's a gala happening there tonight. We could go and pretend like we are one of the guests. Are you up for that? I've been waiting my whole life to be one of those rich guests. I used the card my uncle gave me for the first time and bought a glamorous dress for the event, and it was the perfect fit. When Zayn picked me up, he was speechless. And so was I, because he looked absolutely dripping hot in his suit. Wow, you went all out. You look very nice. Thank you. You look nice too. Once Zane and I arrived at the hotel, I felt like I was actually living my childhood dream, walking in like an elegant lady with my head held high. Okay, so I need you to distract the manager while I find a way into the hotel camera rooms. Are you sure you can do this? I was born to do this. Oh my gosh, my dress! My half a million dress! It's ruined! I'm so sorry, dear. Is there anything I can do? <laughs> the diamonds on my dress are perishing away! Oh, what a disaster! Please, uh, tell me what I can do! I need… I need a dry cleaner! Go fetch me a dry cleaner! Okay, wait right here! We need to solve this now! After my performance, Zane and I managed to sneak past security and get through to the office section of the hotel. The manager's office is around the corner. Do you think we'll find something in there? I think we should try speaking to the security in the camera rooms. That would get us into trouble! Yeah, but I have a plan. Wait here. Zane took quite some time getting inside the bathroom, and I started getting nervous. As I paced up and down, a security guard appeared and touched my shoulder, and I freaked out. <gasps> oh, oh, hi. <laughs> you should have seen your face. Uh, Zane, you almost gave me a heart attack. How did you get the uniform? I bargained with the real security guard. Now come, we don't have much time. Zane entered the camera room, and I followed behind him. The security guard woke up from his nap. Huh? Uh, do you work here? Yes, I'm the new guy. The manager sent me with this very important guest. She needs some information. Zane was such a sleek talker. The security guard believed him, and I asked if they had videos dated two years back, the exact date when the necklace was stolen. Follow me. I'll take you to the file room, where all the old videos are kept. I couldn't believe that we actually convinced this security guard. After he left us in the room, Zane and I wasted no time. Okay, you look at that shelf and I'll look here. Time was going by so fast as we searched and searched for a tape of that night. I almost gave up, until Zane said, Bingo! I think I got it. Oh, I hope it's the one. I think we should forward a bit. Yeah, yeah, stop! I couldn't believe what I saw. The ex-wicked hotel manager was so brave that she didn't even care about the cameras. How did she get away with this? I hear voices outside the door. Zane, how exactly did you bargain with that security guard in the bathroom? I kinda knocked him out. I'm sure he's up now. That means we need to run. Like, now! Zane and I ran like two leopards on fire. There was no way anyone could catch us. I asked Zane to drive me to the police station, found the detective who was in charge of the case, and showed him the video. Mom was finally set free! Thank you so much, Bella, for not giving up on me. Ever since you were locked away, I blamed myself. If only I didn't go into that room! It's all over now. I hope they find that wicked hotel manager. Me too. This calls for a celebration! We should throw a party! No, we don't need all that. Bella and I will be leaving soon. We are? Yes. I'm back now and I can take care of you. Mom made no sense at all. My uncle, who was her brother, was stinking rich, and she always pushed him away or never spoke about him until she went to prison. Mom, I really like it here. Uncle Todd has been really kind to me. I know, just wait until you make a mistake. He won't be so kind after that. That's all in the past. I'm sorry for not helping you when you needed me. Mom ignored Uncle Todd and walked away. I had to speak some sense into her. Mom, we are not going anywhere. I have a better future here with Uncle Todd. Please don't take that away. I was pregnant with you, and your father just ran away. When I came to my brother, he judged me and told me I was a disgrace. But he regrets it now. Please forgive him. Mom eventually got over her pride and gave Uncle Todd a second chance. 
and he threw us the biggest party. Hey, why aren't you out there dancing? I've always liked watching people. Strange. Could I dance with you? Maybe we should take a walk. It was a beautiful night, and walking next to Zane made me feel so many things. He was so handsome, but I wasn't sure if he felt the same way. So, do you have a girlfriend? <laughs> no, I've always focused on working hard, so never really had the time. And do you have a boyfriend? No, I was so focused on getting my mom out of jail that I almost forgot about myself. Then Zane stopped and turned to look at me, and his eyes just made me want to melt in his arms. Then I think it's time you start focusing on you. <laughs> I'm speechless right now, but yes, I think it's time to work on our futures. Zane and I started dating, and when I completed high school, I had the best family support and boyfriend support to finally be a name brand. I became a successful fashionista, but despite all the money I made, there was only one thing that made me truly happy. Love. Hi, my name is Yolanda, and I'm from Australia. I was born with a beautiful, flame-like birthmark on my face. Mom told me that God took more time to create me because I was that special. But what confused me was that she always made me cover up my birthmark with makeup. It's just track practice, Mom. Is this really necessary? Yes, honey. It's to protect you from people who stare too much. I went along with what Mom said, and even though I always covered up my birthmark, she made me feel like the most beautiful girl in the world. I loved her to bits, and we had a very strong bond. But sometimes, seeing the kids in school with their fathers made me jealous and curious about mine. Mom, why don't I have a dad? Uh, he left us years ago. Why? It doesn't matter. You have me now. Mom avoided the topic of my father like the plague, and one day I found out why in the form of a letter showing that I was adopted. You weren't supposed to see that. See what? Adoption papers saying a Frankie Brentwood is my mom and not you? I am your mom. A piece of paper shouldn't matter. If it didn't, why were you hiding it then? Mom couldn't explain, so I dashed up to my room and shut the doors in anger. Curious, I browsed up my birth mother and discovered she came from a wealthy real estate family in England. There was an old family photo of a man with my birthmark holding a woman. She had a child with my birthmark in her arm, Anastasia. I think that was me and my birth parents. I saw my father's number on the site and immediately called but received no response, so I decided to leave a voicemail. Um, hello there, I'm Yolanda. Sorry, Anastasia, and I'm your daughter. I... Mom's knock sounded on the door, interrupting me, and I accidentally sent the voicemail before I could even finish. Honey, please let me in. I wanted to stay angry at her, but I just couldn't. Fine, you can come in. I'm so sorry. I was scared I'd lose you. Her eyes were so sad and I felt really bad. It's okay, I just wished you didn't hide the letter from me. As I talked to Mom, my phone beeped loudly. It was my father. Anastasia. Um, father? Instead of a response, he breathed loudly, and then the line went dead. That was weird. You called your birth father? Mama's face blanched as she began pacing my room, looking really scared. Her behavior was creeping me out. I didn't mean to call him without letting you know. Listen to me, we don't have time. Pack all your things into a suitcase. Mom left my room in a rush, and I was so confused. Suddenly, I heard the sound of vehicles horning. When I looked out through the window, I found three dark-tinted cars parked in front of the house and some men coming out of it. Mom ran into my room and grabbed my arm. Come on, honey, forget about the bags. Before I could do anything, two men burst through the door and each grabbed me and Mom, but Mom flung out a pepper spray from her bag and sprayed it at her attacker, making him drop her. And then she ran for the windows and before she leapt out, turned around to me and said, Never trust these people no matter what. Who was this woman? I was placed into the back seat of a car without a single word. I immediately started to struggle with its doors, which to my disappointment were locked. My heart rate spiked as the car began to move. What was happening? Hey, where are you taking me to? I yelled at the driver in the front seat, but he simply plugged in his earbuds and ignored me until we reached our destination, which to my shock was the airport. When I got out of the car, I spotted a helicopter and my father climbing out of it. He walked up to me and scrubbed at my face hard, revealing my birthmark which was identical to the one on his face. Bless my soul, it's really you in the flesh, Anastasia. Hey, 
First, your men treat me like a thief, and now you're hugging me without explaining why you gave me away and never bothered to check on me for years? I'm sorry about my men. I'll deal with them. Uh, also, I wanted to check on you, but that child thief hid you away from me. She covered your birthmark to make you unrecognizable and changed your name. Child thief? You liar. I saw the adoption papers. Believe me, it was a difficult choice. When we were threatened by bad men years ago, your mother and I had no choice but to entrust you to our servant's care. We signed adoption papers just in case, and when we felt safe, we asked for you. But she ran away with you. That was a lot to take in. I'd stayed with adoptive mom for years, and I didn't know she could do such a thing. How did you finally find me? I traced your call. He suddenly grabbed my shoulders and gave me an intense look. Listen, I want you to promise me that you'll let me know if you ever see that child thief again. If he was speaking the truth, then it was what mom deserved. Come on, I have a lot to show you. He pulled me towards the helicopter and I followed him quietly, curious to learn about my real background. The next day, we landed at a mansion and holy smokes, it was big! Welcome to your home. You can be yourself here. No need for makeup. Hearing that was a relief. As we walked in, we met a lot of servants and security greeting us as if we were royalty. After passing by everyone, I noticed there wasn't any trace of my birth mom. So, where's mother? Um, she traveled out of the country for a while, but she really wanted to see you. Did she ever reach out? No, sadly. She will. If she does, let me know. That was an odd request. She was his wife. Wasn't he supposed to have a clue about her reaching out? Maybe I was overthinking. Please, show my daughter to her room. She must be tired. I was shown into a really big room, and even though I could finally be myself here without all the makeup, I felt like a huge part of me was missing. Mom. I missed her, and despite what Father said about her, I wanted to know what her past was like in mansion with the maids. Uh, hey, how long have you been working here? 20 years. Great, that means you must have known my mom. Adoptive mom, I mean. She's this tall, has green eyes, dark hair, brown skin. Never seen anyone like that in the 20 years I've worked here. No matter how many servants I asked about mom, they all gave me the same answer. I started becoming a little suspicious about my father's side of the story. So one day when I decided to ask about my birth mom, I instinctively knew that something was wrong with what he told me. Gee, I wonder where the mistress of the house is. Um, ask the master. The servants avoided the topic of my birth mom like it was fire, and they always stood in corners whispering whenever I wasn't around. I commenced a small investigation around the house, starting with Father's office, which he always locked up, but I had a plan. Father, good luck at work today. As I hugged him, I slipped his office keys from his pocket, and he didn't even notice. Um, thanks, I guess. I'm in a rush. See you later. After he left, I made sure the hallway was clear before I opened the door to his office and slipped inside. I snooped around and found the most shocking, unexpected thing. Old pictures of my birth mom and adoptive mom. Mom had been right. I couldn't trust father. He was hiding stuff away from me just like her. Right now, I was the only one I could trust. As I stared at the photos, an arrow whizzed past my ear. Then a ninja jumped in through the open windows and pinned me to the ground. You're not Williams Brentwood. Nice observation, Sherlock. Get off me. As I struggled with the ninja on top of me, another jumped in and kicked him off me. I watched with fear as they engaged in a fight before one of them dropped down, a needle poking his hip. OMG, did you kill him? What? No, I only tranquilized him. He took off his mask, revealing a really handsome face. Yolanda, right? How did you know my name? Listen, that's not important right now. We don't have much time. That man was here for your father, who's unfortunately gathered a lot of enemies because he's a bad person. I was so confused. First mom was bad, and now father? I'm Scott, a private detective. I know you won't believe me, but your mom's employed me, and they've been really worried about you. They're together? Before he could say anything, loud footsteps began to approach the office. Someone's coming. Give me a minute. He ran over to a safe in the wall and typed in some numbers. As soon as it opened, he grabbed the papers and envelopes that were inside, and suddenly, a loud alarm began to sound. I'm not going anywhere with you. I don't even know you. If you want to see your moms, come with me. I'd give anything to see them, so when Scott jumped over the window, I decided to trust my guts and follow him. There was more to this I still needed to understand. 
We ran far away from the mansion and found ourselves in a bunker after a few hours. When Scott wasn't watching, I grabbed a tranquilizer from his bag and sneaked up behind him. Do not move or I'll tranquilize you and take you to my father. I'm tired of being lied to and kept in the dark and I need answers to my questions. Everything I said is true. What were those papers you stole from the safe? Architect blueprint, belonging to your adoptive mother. I don't understand. Uh, she worked as a property developer for your dad's real estate firm years ago. And when she landed a billion dollar job to design a hotel, he stole it all from her. Her blueprints, everything. I had no idea mom had been an architect. She never discussed her job with me, but what does all this have to do with me? Your birth mom and adoptive mom were close friends. They planned to sue your dad, but he found out. They had to go into hiding. Your birth mom gave you to your adoptive mom, making it harder for your dad to find you. If he did, he'd use you to lure her out of hiding. All the information was hard to process. My entire <sighs> life felt like one lie after another. Um, I'm sorry about threatening you. No hard feelings. You deserve to know the truth. You should rest. Tomorrow you'll meet your moms and they'll tell you everything. I slumped onto the bed and drifted into a long, uncomfortable sleep. I couldn't tell what more discoveries awaited me the next day, but I was looking forward to them. The next morning, I woke up to the most unexpected news. After what happened last night, your father marked us as wanted criminals. It's all over the news. Jeez, we even had a bounty of $10,000 on our heads for details of our whereabouts. I couldn't believe my father. He was such a monster. Switch off your phone immediately. He might call you to track us. What should we do now? We'll sneak out tonight in disguises. Scott and I dressed up in perfect disguises later that night. He looked lovely as a girl, but the dress was so ridiculous on him that I nearly <laughs> burst out laughing. Never breathe a word of this to anybody. We got on a train from London to Paris, and in a few hours, we were at our destination, my mom's house. When the door cracked open, I realized how nervous I was to see them. OMG, baby, you're back. I missed you so much. I've missed you too, mom. As soon as I finished hugging mom, I faced my birth mom, and she looked so happy to see me. Anastasia, you're so grown, my baby girl. I don't know if you can ever forgive me. There's nothing to forgive, mom. You were only trying to protect me from father. Yes, sweet girl, I was. He's a monster. Then why did you marry him? Because of a business deal he had with my parents. I never loved him, I loved her. Holy freaking meatballs, my two moms were dating. When I worked for him, he scammed me and we realized what he was up to. We threatened to report his crimes, which drove him crazy. We had to go into hiding. I'm really sorry you went through that, moms. It's fine, we had each other. I kept you in my girlfriend's care because you'd be safer with her. It was dangerous for us all to stay together and your dad would never suspect you were with her. I'm sorry I made you hide your birthmark. It's really beautiful. I just didn't want your dad to ever find us. I don't care. I'm just happy to have you two as my moms. We still have to look at this. That's all my hard work he stole away. And the piece of evidence we need to finally land him in jail, honey. We relocated into the house and hatched a plan to land dad in jail. I'll go to the cops with the evidence tomorrow while you two stay here and remain safe, okay? Hey, what about me? You've done too much for us already. Not enough, apparently. Your father deserves jail and you need a partner to watch your back just in case. Seeing the seriousness on Scott's face made me feel butterflies in my belly. It was a new feeling I couldn't understand, but I think I was starting to grow a crush on him. Fine, you can come. Do we still need a disguise? Nope, I don't think we're wanted criminals in Paris. If only we knew how wrong we were. We got to the station the next morning, and while speaking to the clerk, Scott and I found posters of our faces in the bulletin board. Just wait here, I'll get the superintendent. As soon as the officer left, we turned around and ran like our lives depended on it. It was time to turn to a second plan, a lawsuit. My mom sued father, and during the hearing, a lot of people my dad stole from showed up as witnesses because of my mom's courage. The court considered all the evidence against him and finally reached a decision. Williams Brentwood, you have been found guilty of fraud, theft, and abuse of authority. The news about my father's arrest spread like wildfire, and his assets were shared amongst all his victims. My birth mom got his mansion, and my adoptive mom received the proceeds from the hotel he used her blueprint for. Together, we all moved into the mansion, and it was the best thing ever. But something was missing. Scott. Ever since my father's arrest, he suddenly disappeared. But one day while I was dressing up in my room, an arrow whizzed past my ear. Whoever you are, show yourself. 
and Ninja jumped in and I almost kicked him, but then he took his mask off and my face lit up. Missed me? So much. Why did you leave without saying anything? I was scared to face my feelings, but for months, I couldn't stop thinking about you. I like you, Yolanda. Even without makeup? You're the most beautiful person inside and out. I've never met anyone as brave as you are. Jeez, me too. Come here. I learned a little more about myself during my discoveries. There's nothing more beautiful than confidence. Smile, shine, and keep your head up. Hi, I'm Phoenix. Ever since I was a little girl, I admired my dad because he worked at the U.S. Space Force. Whenever he had time, we would look up at the stars using his telescope. Look, that's Mars right there. Did you know I went to Mars once and saw a real-life alien? It had green skin and really long fingers. Wow, I want to go to Mars too! You will, my love. You will go even beyond that. Dad was my childhood inspiration, but Mom, who is a housewife, always scolded Dad when he told me alien stories. You need to stop talking all that garbage to her about aliens. Kids will laugh at her in school. Sadly, Dad kept harping on about aliens even at his workplace. And without proof to back up his claims, Dad was assumed crazy and fired. If only they knew how wrong they were. Things went sour between my parents after that. They wouldn't even talk to each other directly anymore, even if they were in the same room. Phoenix, can you ask your mom why there's no food for me? Mom, why is there no food for Dad? Tell your dad that he should tell his alien friends to bring him food. Ugh. Dad, let's just share mine. Don't worry, I just lost my appetite. Over time, Dad turned into a shadow of his former self, and the tension between him and Mom just grew worse. I couldn't wait to grow into an adult and move out. To make time fly fast, I buried myself into my studies, and as soon as I graduated <laughs> high school, I applied for the U.S. Air Force Academy. And with my results, I was invited almost instantly. However, Mom was not happy about it. You're going down the same path as your dad. I'm not going there to chase aliens, Mom. I want to protect the country. Plus, if I succeed, Dad might come back to his old self. Phoenix, leave the protecting our country stuff to the guys. You're a girl, and you're fragile. Good night, Mom. She did her best to make me change my mind, but I put my feet down and joined the school. I was the only female in my set, and most of the guys laughed when they saw me. Two twin brothers named Monkai and Ponkai were the worst. Oh, look at the Barbie that wants to fly a spaceship. Not that you look bad in the uniform, but I'm sure you'll look better in a pink princess gown. <laughs> Their taunts only fueled me to work twice as hard, and though, in a matter of months, I was beating most of the guys in physical fitness tests, I kept to myself. However, one day, I just lost it. I was heading to class from my dorm one morning when I saw Ponkai and Monkai holding Jake, the most quiet guy in our class, against my locker. Hey, you two, weren't you taught that people who pick on others are scum? Let him go. Or what, princess? I walked right up to my locker and forced it open, <laughs> smacking Ponkai in the nose with it. Oh, my nose! Ouch, didn't see you there. Monkai rushed at me, but even though he was taller, I had him dangling before me in seconds. Fetch, Ponkai! <gasps> when our instructors came onto the scene, many cadets bore witness to the fact that these twins had always been troublesome. They were tasked with washing the toilets for a whole school year, and I was allowed to go free. I wanted to go my own way, but something about the way Jake was trembling moved me to try and comfort him. Hey, are you okay? Don't talk to me! Huh? I just saved you, mister. Maybe you shouldn't have. This life is all messed up for me anyways. Whoa, someone was angsty. Well, next time I won't. His attitude annoyed me, as well as made me curious. But I soon discovered what was behind it. Just before we were about to level up from being fourth class cadets, Jake and I were paired to be pilots in test flying a spaceship. I was so excited to finally get in one. But when we entered the cockpit, Jake started shaking like a leaf. Hey, are you okay? No. This, this is my worst nightmare. Flying a spaceship is your worst nightmare? What are you doing in this academy, dude? I wanted to be a dancer like Michael Jackson, but my dad forced me to join this academy. He just wants me to be a copy of him. I felt my heart go out to him. I knew firsthand what a pushy parent felt like. It's okay. Look, place your hands over mine. We can do this together. Breathe in and out. Ready, steady, go! We successfully flew the craft around the base and got good marks for the test. Jake was so happy. Thanks, Phoenix. You're a lifesaver. After that, we became close friends. He even invited me to his house on his 18th birthday. When I arrived ready to party, I felt myself sweat with how stiff everything was. There was no music, no dancing. Oh, Jake, did somebody die? <laughs> no, this is how my dad wants it. And I've kind of gotten used to it this way, even when he's not around. How can you get used to throwing sad parties? Come on, my birthday gift to you is we're gonna dance, baby. 
I connected my phone to a Bluetooth speaker, and soon music was blaring from the speakers. I started to dance, and a few others joined me. Phoenix, I don't think this is a good idea. You said he's not around, right? Come on, show me those Michael Jackson moves. I managed to persuade Jake, and soon the guy was rocking on the floor. He was so awesome, everyone stood back to stare at him and clap. Suddenly, the music ended, and we heard a loud crash. The audio speakers had been smashed by an angry-looking man. What on earth is going on here? Dad! That's your dad? Jake looked ready to pee himself. I looked at the man again and quickly recognized him as one of my dad's former colleagues. They usually went on missions together. You stupid son! I give you some freedom to throw this party, and you go playing music and dancing like a silly clown? Party? Looks more like a funeral until the music. What did you say? With all due respect, sir, Jake only danced. He didn't commit a felony. Besides, he loves to dance. Why don't you let him? Is that what you go around telling your friends? That's it! Get out, everyone! I refused to budge, but Jake insisted. Phoenix, please go. Trust me, my father is powerful enough to kick you out of the academy if you cross him. That <gasps> shut me up, and I regretfully left, hoping to see Jake at school and apologize for ruining his party. But when school resumed the following week, Jake didn't return. All attempts to reach him failed, as his number constantly refused to go through. Once I even tried to locate his home again, but I got lost and had to go home. I was so worried about him, and school became lonely for me, but I had no choice then to push on. Years passed, and after my graduation, I was commissioned an officer in the US Space Force. I felt like I had finally arrived. Little did I know that the battle for my dreams was not yet over. On our first day of work, we were all assembled in a large hall for our first assignment. Welcome, new recruits. The Chief Commanding Officer, Mr. DeVille, will now speak to you all. But when the Chief Commanding Officer stepped up to the podium, I felt my stomach clench with nerves. It was Jake's dad. With the way he glared at me, I could tell he recognized me. Eeps. You, why are you staring at me? Sorry, sir. Who told you to look away? Huh? Didn't you just- Who told you to speak? 50 push-ups, now! What? That's crazy! Make that an 80. I dropped to the ground and began to do the push-ups, while my colleagues were assigned missions. By the time I was done, the hall was empty and I hadn't gotten one. I felt so humiliated and angry. I marched to Mr. DeVille's office to tell him that I wouldn't tolerate being treated unfairly. The door was halfway open. Excuse me, sir. I… My eyes popped at the sight of Jake in his father's office. Phoenix! Jake! Before any of us could say anything else, we heard the sound of someone coming in, and Jake grabbed my hand and rushed us out of the office to another empty one. Jake, why are we hiding? No, where have you been all this while? After my birthday incident, Dad had me transferred to another Air Force Academy in another country. Oh, Jake, I am so sorry. It's all my fault. Don't be Phoenix. The only thing painful about it was how much I missed you. Thanks to how clueless I was with romance, I didn't understand then the strange flutter in my tummy at his soft-spoken words. I'm here now. Yes, you are. Seeing Jake again, I forgot all about my anger at his dad as we spent a lot of time talking. But over time, my excitement with our reunion dulled in the face of Mr. DeVille's continuous letdown. Instead of assigning me the work I had trained for, he kept sending me on petty errands that were downright insulting. Onions? Shaving stick? Wait, you want me to go shopping for you? Isn't that what ladies are for? I'll have you know, sir, that I am here based on pure merit. Being female doesn't make me handicapped. But being Barnes' daughter does. Wait, all this while you recognized me? I thought you were my dad's friend. Why are you treating me this way? Who knows if his craziness is hereditary? That's why I can't send you on missions. Maybe you could be my personal office cleaner instead. Don't call my dad crazy! Keep your list! Dad's condition was always a sensitive issue for me, and finding out Mr. DeVille was judging me based on that turned my emotions upside down, and for the first time in years, I broke down and cried. <laughs> Just then, someone took my hand. Phoenix, stop crying. I heard everything. Your dad is a mountain I can't defeat! About that. Phoenix, there's something I want to show you. Jake took me out to a restaurant downtown, and he showed me pictures he had taken from his dad's diary. In it were several mentions of how jealous he was of my dad's career success. From what I gathered, your dad was on the verge of becoming the chief commander, before he was accused of going bananas. Accused? Actually, my dad is a bit banana. No. After reading dad's diary, I have my suspicions that my dad did something that made your dad think he saw an alien. I have no idea what, I have searched the whole house for it, but we may find something in his office. Jake, if this is true, it could mean big trouble for your dad. 
Your happiness means the most to me, Phoenix. Jake's revelation made me furious with Mr. DeVille. I had to find out if he was right, and there was only one way to have access to his father's <laughs> office without being suspicious. The next day, I stood waiting for Jake's dad at the door of his office. Yes, what? If I become your personal office cleaner for seven days, sir, would you consider me for missions? Hmm, I might. Then yes, I will be your personal cleaner. He quickly handed me the keys, and I got down to work, searching for clues as I cleaned. Four days flew, and there was nothing I could find. On the fifth day, I was on the verge of giving up. What a waste of time! Ugh. I placed my hand over a spot in the wall to catch my breath, and nearly jumped in fright when I accidentally hit a lever, and a floor tile opened. What in the world? When I looked in, I saw a strange green costume. Dad's words from years ago echoed in my head as I stared at it. It had green skin and really long fingers. What Dad thought was an alien was only Jake's dad wearing an alien costume. I stuffed the costume in my bag, arranged the office as it should, and snuck away to meet Jake. Together, we drove straight to my parents' home. Dad was sitting on the porch when I arrived. Dad, did the alien you saw years ago resemble anything like this? Dad was shocked when I showed him the costume and told him how I found it. The day I saw that alien on Mars, Mr. DeVille was my partner as usual and had excused himself to check something. He came back some time after that alien disappeared. It was him then! He dressed up in this to fool you! I knew he was always jealous of my success, but to go this far just to kick me out. Mom came in just then, and her expression looked like she heard it all. To think we all thought you were mad when you were only tricked. You have to make an entry with the authorities right now. It had to be the first time in a year she spoke directly to Dad. All right, let's go. <laughs> Dad reported to his former superiors, and they promised to look into the matter. Hoping that Mr. DeVille still had an atom of humanity left in him, I endured the two days left of our bargain in hopes that he will stick to it. But when the time was up, he wasn't willing to budge. You said after seven days you would let me go on missions. I said I might, not will. <laughs> I've had enough. I'm going to write a report of your maltreatment. And who would believe you? I do. I am a witness, in fact. <laughs> the daughter of a crazy man and my idiot son are nothing against me. I am the authority here. Got it? A group of men walked in just then, and amongst them was... Not anymore, Mr. DeVille. Or should I say, Mr. Devil. Dad! That costume? How? Think twice next time you tell your enemy's daughter to take care of your personal space. Jake's father was arrested right there, and Dad was reappointed as space officer in his place. As for Jake, with his father out of the way, he quit the force to pursue his dreams as a professional dancer. One day, he asked me out to a beautiful nature park, and I wore the prettiest dress in my possession for the occasion. Don't ask me why. You seem like the kind of girl that would punch me if I tell you how pretty you look right now. Because I'm part of the force? Come on, I'm still a girl at heart. So you wouldn't punch me either if I kiss you? He drew closer, and I felt my whole face go red. What's happening to my face? <laughs> You're blushing. Your face is all red. I don't blush. I'm an officer. Make it go away. There is only one remedy. Jake kissed me just then, and instead of the stupid <laughs> blush going away... <gasps> no! You just made it worse! You've no romantic bone in your body. Jake and I started dating, and my parents loved each other again. Dad and I even went on missions together. Life was good. I learned that trials are a part of life. It comes in different ways, but if we don't give up, we will overcome it and come out even stronger.